Today we're going to look at arrays and how to insert an element into the array and this is a part of the grade 12 CAP syllabus for information technology. Now when you want to insert an element into the array there are two scenarios that you need to be aware of. One, is the array sorted or two, is it not sorted? So depending on whether it's sorted or not depends on what we are going to do to insert an element into the array. We are first going to look at an unsorted array and then so we're going to look at the steps for that. So the steps involve the following. First of all, we need to find out where we want to insert this element into the array. And then we want to find out what is the value that we must insert. You can do that in either order. It doesn't make a difference. But with an unsorted array, we don't know where they want to put it. So we need to ask the user for that information. And we need to also ask them for where or what the value is that we must insert into this array at that particular position. After that, we're going to move each element from the back up one position. And we're going to keep moving the last one up one. We're going to move the second last one up one and the third last one up one until we get to the position that we want to insert this element. And once we are there, we will stop moving these elements back and then we will insert our value into that particular position. And then lastly, because we are inserting an element into the array, we've got to have some sort of array counter which tells us how many elements are in the array. So because we are inserting a new element, it means we must increase that array counter. Just so we can see it visually, let's have a look at this array over here. Um, there you can see it is unsorted and there are five elements in the array. So our counter that's going to be the number of elements in this array will be five. And we want to insert the number 55 into position three. So we know exactly, we've already asked for that, for wh what position we want to insert it and what value we want to insert it. Now we're going to start moving back the last element. So we're going to take that number 70 that's in position 5 and we're then going to put it into position 6. And then we're going to take position 4 and put it into position 5. And then we're going to take position 3 and put it into position 4. Now that we've done that, we are now at the position that we want to insert the element at position 3. We are now simply going to change position 3's value to the value that we want to insert, which is the 55. Now that is how it would work with an unsorted an array. Also a little thing to take note of is that we would probably have to increase the array counter to 6 or from 5 to 6 because now there are 6 elements in that array. In the case that we have a sorted array it works very similar. It actually does exactly what we just did before and but there's just a few steps that we take first. The first thing is we need to ask for the value to insert. So we need to ask them what is the value that we want to insert. Now a lot of the time if the user is inserting a value into a sorted array, they won't know where it must be inserted. It is up to you to put it in the right place. So the first step after asking the, the user for the value is to find where is the correct position to insert this element into the array so that it remains sorted. After that, we just make double sure if the position cannot be found, then we just insert it at the end. But if it can be found, then we must move each element from the back up one position exactly like we just did before. And then we go until we find that position that we have found, which is the correct position. And then we insert it into that required position. And last but not least, again, we must increase the array counter so that we know that we have one more element in our array. Now let's have a look at the code that we would use for this scenario. Now here I've got a program where we've got tennis players and we are going to use the sorted array technique where the array is sorted. And the reason why this is we're going to use this example is because um, the technique that you use in a sorted array includes the part that you would use in an unsorted array. So let's just have a look at our scenario here. We're going to display the name and initials of the users or the people in this that are tennis players. And we want to add a value from that edit box. We're going to put it into the list of array of, of the details of these tennis players. But we must do it in so that it does it in the correct order. So just looking at the code quickly, we're going to go right up to the top. Just so that you are aware, there is an array tennis, which is, goes from 1 to 20. And there is our variable that's counting the number of elements that are actually in the array. We might not have 20, we might only, only have 5 or 6, but this will tell us exactly how many are in that array. So let's go to that button where we're going to add elements. The first step, as I said, we need to get the name or get the value that needs to be inserted into the array. So I'm getting that from that edit box. 
Next, we're going to find the correct position and to insert the value. So what I'm going to use here is a while loop. And, the, and I've got this little flag here called be found, which is a boolean. And I'm assuming that we will never find the right value. So we make it false. And then I've got this looping variable, which equals to 1. And I'm going to start at position 1 in the array and move all the way to the end, which means I count. I'm going to move all the way to I count and, until I can find where in this array I must insert this value. So basically, I only want to stop if I find the value, the find the right position. So while be found equals false, we must keep on doing this loop. But also, while my I loop variable, which is going 1, 2, 3, 4, while it's still less than I count, because I don't want to continue looking for this value after, say for example, there are six elements in the array. I don't want to continue looking after position six, because obviously it's not there then. And I'm basically asking myself, if the value in the array at our loop, which is in the first case of position 1, so if the first element in array tennis, if that is greater than S name, then obviously S name must be at position 1. That means we are found the position, so I'm going to make be found equal true. And then if it's true, you'll notice this while loop will stop automatically, and our loop will remain position 1. But if it's not, it will increase our loop to 2. And we will then check, is position 2 in the array greater than S name, the value that we want to insert? And we will keep checking it until we find the right place for it, in which case B found will be set to true, and then this loop will stop. And then our loop will be left as the value that we must insert. But if we get to the end of the elements in the array, for example, we get to our count, then it will also stop. And be found will have remained false because we would not have found the right position to put it in. If that is the case, if we have not found the right position to put it in, which means we've gone through the entire loop and S name doesn't fit anywhere inside that loop, then obviously it must come at the end. And that is what we do over here at this part of the code. We've, if there's no position found, then we insert it at the end. So I count, so if there's five elements, we're going to insert it at position I count plus one. At position six is going to be the new value that we want S name. That's inserting the value into the array at the end. But if we have found the position else, then we do this part over here, which basically says from I count, which is say there are five elements in the array, five up until the position that we want to store the value in, down to, so we use a down to, we then go and move every element from one R plus one up into R. So for example, whatever was in position five will now be the value in position six. Whatever is in position four will now be in position five, and so on and so on. And so it's going to do that up until our loop. So for example, if we want, if we found that the position is position 2, that we must insert the value, it will move all the elements up one position up until position 2. The reason why we start at the back is because if we start at the front and we move position 2 to position 3 and then from 3 to 4, we will start overriding values that we wouldn't know what they are anymore. If I change position 3 to the value that's in position 2, um, and then all of a sudden I need to move positions 3 to 4. I won't know what position 3 was originally because I've already overwritten it. Overwritten it, sorry. Overwritten it. Overwritten it. So that's why we start from the back and we do down to. So we go from our count down to our loop. And we keep doing that until all the elements have been moved up one, up until the position. And once the for loop is completed, then we insert S name into the position that we think is the right position, which is R loop. And then, as I said, the last thing we do is we increase the R count, the counter for the, the array, because we've inserted a value into the array. This code over here is simply there so we can display the values in the array again, so that I can see that it is working. You don't need that, but that's what I've done here. Just also take note of this code over here is all you really need if you want to insert the value in an unsorted array. Okay, the only difference is you would ask the user for the position and that position would be our loop. So the position that the user says he wants to insert the element into an unsorted array, you would ask for that value and you would say our loop. 
The other thing that I would be wary of, it's something that you can do as like defensive programming, is you could ask the user or check if the user wants to insert an element into the array. And let's say, for example, we've got 20 elements in the array and they want to insert another one. Obviously, we don't have space now to insert it. So you could have some code in the beginning to check that the that our count is not equal to 20. And if it is, then you say, sorry, we don't have space to insert it. So we've discussed the code, we said the steps, we get the value that needs to be inserted, we find the correct position, and then if we find that there's no correct position, then we insert it at the end, otherwise we loop from the back of the array to the position that we want to insert and shift all those elements up a bit, and then we insert the value into the array and then increase the array counter. Remembering that this is all you really need if it's unsorted. So let's run and test it to see if it runs. So here we got our program. There you can see the values are sorted. We're going to put my name in. So long M or Mr. Long and we're going to insert it. So I'm hoping if it works correctly, it should insert it after position 5. So it should be in position 6. So let's add it. And there we go. So it is actually after 5. It's at position 6. You can see it's all still sorted. So what it did was it moved all those values. So number six, number seven, number eight, it all shifted up one position and it put Mr. Long in at the right position. If you notice there when I ran that program, just to show you again, just quickly, um, when I inserted my name, there was a little error there, which I just want to clarify with you. You see there's seven elements. If I inserted it, inserts in the correct position, but all of a sudden there are nine values in this array. Where did that last one come from? Oh, that's just a little error in this code. If you go to the form create, I think it's the form create, no, not the panel. There we go. The form create over here where we're going to display all the values. If I can find it. There it is. So there's the code. We're going to display all the values. Um, they display our count minus one. So we should probably minus one from there. And that would make it work a little bit better. So we display all the values from the word go. There you can see there are eight values. Perfect. So to recap, when you want to insert an element into the array, you would ask for what the value is that you want to insert. You would then ask for or find the position that it needs to be inserted. Then if there is no position found, you insert it at the end. If there is, you will shift everything from the back up until that position up one. And then you insert the value into that position. And then you increase your array counter. For more videos on arrays and examples on arrays, as well as other concepts from RT and from CAT, please go to our YouTube channel and subscribe, leave comments, we'd love to hear from you. Also subscribe or follow our Twitter handle, there you can see at MrLongEdu, so that you can get up to date whenever we upload new videos.